One of the most common subjects that we hear from with our atheist viewers and from people who write us in at the email address has to do with the subject of how do I come out to my family? How do I deal with, I'm an atheist now, but my parents are very strict Christian fundamentalists. Or they may not even necessarily be that strict Christian fundamentalists, but they're Christian enough that the idea that they're suddenly going to be fronted, confronted with their child coming to them and saying, or even their adult child coming to them and saying, you know, I'm kind of an atheist and I don't believe in all this God stuff. Um, that can be uh, a source of real tension and real strife in a, uh, in a family. Uh, there he is, just ran right in, <laughs> look at him. Hello everybody and welcome to another perfectly ordinary episode of the Atheist Experience where nothing unexpected has happened whatsoever. Uh, well done. Anyway, as I was saying before, uh, so I'm, I was, what? I'm telling folks about the emails that we get from people, uh, oh, asking about how to deal with emails. their, yeah, from their families. How do you deal with your Christian family if you need to come out to them? And Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's a show today and you're on it. <laughs> you know, you are uh, uh -huh. lucky that I'm actually not currently on a plane coming home from California, which I was That would be to awesome. Do this weekend. Because we, you could do the show like from your smartphone camera and we'd patch in or yeah, something. Except yeah, except I have like a really cheap phone that has no smart capabilities whatsoever. Ah, well, th that's fine. Huh. But what do we say? <laughs> Um, I, a problem that a lot of young atheists have, and we get this email uh, quite a bit, and in fact we've had a couple in the last few days, from viewers who write in and they say, my family's really Christian, and, uh, but I'm atheist and I'm having doubts, what, how do I come out to my family, how do I, talk, how do I tell them about this, what, and, and this is, we can give a lot of different perspectives on this question, can't we? Because, for example, you've been a lifelong atheist. Yes. And you've never really had, you're several generations of <clears throat> atheism in your family. Uh, Most of us came from a theistic background. So, um... Uh, sorry. Are you more crafting on the... No. No, let's see. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> um, you were yeah. war crafting, which is why you're late. I didn't you know were that wowing, was show today. You didn't... <laughs> You were playing Warcraft. World of Warcraft. <laughs> I wasn't. I didn't know you were supposed to be on the air. <laughs> um, Intervention time. Oh, great. Great. Actually, it's funny World of you uh, Warcraft, bring man. up kids coming uh -huh. out to their parents. Yeah, change the subject. Am... Uh -huh. No, we're, <laughs> that we're was getting the back, subject we're we getting were back on. to the, yes. But when the subject becomes to ridiculing Russell for playing WOW instead of being on the show, that becomes the most important subject ever. <laughs> no, we're kidding. No, seriously. <sighs> I don't have to take this kind of abuse. <laughs> okay. Okay, just kidding. It's all hijinks at the ACA. Um, <laughs> yes, so what do we say? What do we do? Live TV with all volunteers. Mm, tell ya. No. Um, um, yeah, but I mean, uh, I've never had to deal with uh, atheist parents, except mm -hmm. that right now I'm in the middle of some uh, dealing with atheist parents-in-law. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's got something to do with why I'm not on a plane from California today, but, you know, okay. that is a Well, that's story. not a thing that we, yeah, you need to go into yeah. details about, but the, I, <clears throat> one, th I, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I was going to do a blog post about it. Mm -hmm. and, I was also, but and I so never we could, really I'll do several. to it. Yes, we could. It'll be fun. We can all do one. Um, okay. But one of the first pieces of advice that uh, I was thinking about doling out in my great wisdom was <laughs> be Enlighten patient. Us, oh yes. Martin. Um, be patient and compassionate. That's the first thing. Sure. Right? So because, okay, in as much as depending upon how fundamentalist they are and how emotional and intolerant they might be about suddenly being confronted with the godless child. You have to realize they are the ones caught in this deep-seated delusion. Mm -hmm. And this is the, they have the thing that is difficult to overcome. You don't necessarily. I mean, you're thinking this thing through. You're thinking about your identity. They have essentially absorbed their religion into their lives. And it is very, very different for them to think in any sort of context that doesn't involve the religion at its root. And so they're going to be upset. They, they may very well be deeply emotional. 
um, it'll be a fraught situation. You need to just try to show patience with them, especially if they get really, really horrible. You know, the worse they get, the nicer and calmer you need to be about the situation, because ultimately, creeds, beliefs, ideologies aren't worth tearing a family up about. And one of the things that I think is very insidious about religion is that it has that capacity to break families up, to split up these bonds. And uh, so I would say, first off, determine what, if, you, if, you, if you're worried about this as an issue to begin with, clearly what you want is to keep a relationship with your family going. Right. You want to have a good relationship with your parents, brother, sister, whoever you're having conflict with. So you get to realize right out of the gate, okay, whatever is going on here, it's not worth losing my relationship with this person, this family tie. Even though we deeply disagree about the belief system, we can have a meeting of minds, it's just going to be harder work for them. But at the same time, depending on how old you are, um, mm. there is a limit to the amount There's, of yeah. stuff a... that you have to take. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If it... When it, I, I mean, <sighs> parents would like the opportunity to shape their kids' lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and with some parents, uh, the goal is to get them to be an independent person and flying out on their own uh, mm -hmm. because that is the hallmark of a successful parent. Um, but with other parents, there are, there are grievances that are so bad. Uh, and, you know, bear in mind that uh, religious parents are people who believe that their kids are, who believe that non-believers are going to a place of fire and damnation and torture forever. And while it's unfortunate that they would believe that sort of thing, uh, you know, uh, you should recognize that it is psychologically difficult to square that. And there's a lot of cognitive dissonance going on because they don't want their kid to go to hell, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yet they have to believe, based on the doctrine, that the kid is not only going to this place of fire and torment forever, but they somehow deserve it. Um, mm -hmm. And on some level, it's, it's admirable that somebody who has this, this irrational belief would want to spare their kid. And it's difficult to square that idea with, uh, with the idea that, um, you know, their kid ought child. to be spared. Yeah. And, and, I mean, with the idea that their kid deserves this punishment and without this magical voodoo belief, mm -hmm. uh, won't get the free ticket, which which they never really think about. <laughs> mm -hmm. But according to Christianity, it's uh, it's you know the the uh, victory of mercy over justice, mm -hmm. since justice would be going to that bad place. Yeah, um, that is one reason why the the sort of silent agreement that I have reached with my own parents mm -hmm. is that it. Religion has become this thing that we just don't really discuss. It's casually mentioned, occasionally it comes up. But my mother especially has swallowed lock, stock, and barrel the whole, I mean, everything, every aspect of it, hell, right, heaven, right. And, and, and punishment, etc., etc. And it is a source of great emotional anguish to her, the thought that her little boy is going to go to hell, right? And yeah. that in me is just one more thing that I can check on my list of reasons to resent and hate the hell out of Christianity <laughs> because it has introduced this unnecessary emotional anguish into her life. She is fearing and becoming distraught right. over something that she doesn't need to fear. Yeah, now never having been a Christian myself, I do not, um, I, I've never had that emotional state where I imagine somebody that I love spending an eternity in this bad place. But, I mean, you know, using my powers of empathy, mm -hmm. I can imagine that it would, that if I genuinely believed that my son would suffer this horrible fate, then I would be suffering from some crippling fear, because mm -hmm. that's a horrible thing to imagine. I even, you know, get kind of heartsick at movies where bad stuff happens to pretend kids. Mm -hmm. it, it makes me sad, and it makes me imagine myself in that situation. And I can't imagine what parents must be going through mm -hmm. dealing with that 
uh, dealing with that nonsense. <laughs> yeah, because it's essentially the cruelest form of emotional blackmail you can commit mm -hmm. against someone. You know, tell them if you look all here, all your loved ones, and they're going to burn forever, and etc., etc. Et so. I, I wish that there was one uh, a piece of one size fits all advice that we could give to you know our viewers, our atheist viewers who are young and just about to you know figuring out how to come out and how to deal with mom and dad and brother and sister and what have you. It's it's really not as simple as that. It, it's at the best I could say it's a situation where you are just going to have to feel everything out, read the individual situation that you're in, read the responses that you're getting and decide for yourself whether or not it is a subject that should even be pursued. I mean, that is also another option. Whether or not you even decide to talk about religion with your folks, if it is this thing that causes a big upset. Yeah, and it really does depend on the, the level of your parents' commitment to these beliefs and the age you are. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're out of the house and living on your own, then it's going to be unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Just ask Matt and Jeff. They're going to call you a lot. They're going to mm -hmm. be concerned for your eternal soul. Uh, they're going to go through the same kind of arguments that, uh, that we get on this show, and not very well, because mm -hmm. they're not practiced at it. They're not practiced um, at it, and they're in this emotionally fraught state, too. Yeah. So. On the other hand, if you're, say, 15, uh, mm -hmm. and you're in high school, they still have legal power over you, and they can, you know, they can drag you to church, <laughs> depending mm -hmm. on uh, drag you to hell. what kind of parents they are. <laughs> um, and they can, you know, they can do all sorts of things to make your life a living hell. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, most of the emails that we get seem to be, the ones that ask this particular question, mm -hmm. seem to be from, like, college kids. Right. Which, for the most part. Which we don't hear from right too many 40-year-olds. You know, it's in a halfway point because I yeah. assume most of the parents are paying for their college. So there's that huge chunk of money and their mm -hmm. life future that, that they could withhold from them if they chose. Uh, and then also... Yeah. Um, well, no, I've, just, I've never heard that particular concern voiced. Yeah. In one of these emails, but although that I guess would be a concern, right? But well, well, I mean, mainly, you know, I being a disowned person. I mean, being disowned by your parents yeah. is different um, when you're 20 than when you're 30. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think mainly the concern is just they're not wanting some just major family rift over this. Uh, the young atheist is wanting their parents to be simply understanding of their lack of belief mm -hmm. and make. Uh, Essentially realizing that, hi, it's still me here. I'm no different a person, a human being. Except now I'm dead well, except that, Yeah, except that I don't <laughs> believe in God, and according to you, I'm you know, going to go like a fire. But I'm still me. I still have the same likes. I still have the same personality. The same things still make me laugh, make me happy, make me sad. Right. You know, I, I still like softball if I was playing softball. All of these, I'm still the same person that I was. And suddenly being godless does not, is not going to transform me overnight into... You know, Buffalo Bill from Sons of the Lambs yeah. or something. So it's just going to be a situation that you'll have to feel out on your own. I mean, I, I, there, it's wonderful if there's just a one formula that, uh, that people could deal with in terms of bringing their families on board or at least right. assuaging <clears throat> those fears, but there's really not. Because everyone's different, everyone has their different emotional marks that they have to. Hit. Yeah, of uh -huh. course, the answer we have when we get these emails is we never do have an answer, yeah. do we? <laughs> no. Because, I mean, we can sit here and philosophize and tell you to see things from your parents' perspective, but, I mean, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. going to be rough coming out to your parents at, mm -hmm. at any age, yeah. uh, and it's going to be rougher at some ages, and uh, I don't know, when, when anybody figures out what the optimal way to <laughs> come out to their parents and smooth and keep things smooth and friendly is yeah. let us know yeah although again sometimes I, i've i've spoken to some folks and friends of mine have told me that they ended up being very pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. that uh, you know a parent did not have yeah and some parents atheists. eventually become atheists maybe yeah. i mean didn't dan barker's whole family his brother anyway eventually become an atheist uh, yeah, possibly. I don't. Yeah, I know. I haven't followed his life too. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I read one, his one of his, yes, losing faith. Losing faith. faith yeah. yeah, and he's got a recent one, Godless, which I think mm. has all the good bits of losing faith in faith, and faith, <laughs> and and some new material. So, okay. um, all right, that's a good one. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, if I were you, I would. Let's show we <laughs> You're about sitting the time? in the host chair. Yeah, <laughs> I would go straight to line three. You want to do that? Yes. Let's do. Yeah.